Friday, happy Friday. Welcome everybody to a new episode of the social media scene. Ooh, today we have a lot to talk about. Indeed, and I have a special guest. I'm excited. I'm excited because I have a special guest. So you'll get to meet that special guest in just a minute, just a minute. But before then, here's what we're talking about today. We've got some Facebook news, of course. Oh yes, Facebook is in the news. Facebook has launched a new platform for writers. Writers, you're gonna wanna listen to this because Facebook might get you paid. I stress might, (laughs) okay? Then, here's the other thing we're gonna talk about today. Good Ideas Festival. Uh Uh-huh, a little bit of old school, a little bit of new school marketing festivals. Facebook is doing a festival just for small business owners. And I'll tell you what that's all about today. And today we got to talk about Instagram, specifically the CEO saying, you know what? We're not a photo sharing app anymore. Deal with it. (laughs) And last but not least, got to talk about this great article uh, that I read. It was an interview with the Patreon CEO, Jack Conte, and why he says creators, technically concerning your audience, you may not be safe safe on social media platforms and i'll tell you exactly what he means by that and no it doesn't it's not has nothing to do with data privacy so don't worry about that piece but i'll tell you exactly what we're talking about in just a moment uh but before we get to that here's the show opus don't don't go anywhere i will be right back Happy Friday, happy Friday, happy Friday. Woo, today is a good day. Every day is a good day, technically. If you, if you're, if you, you know, if you're breathing, <laughs> especially the way you want to, <laughs> it's a good, it's a good day. Now, today on the social media scene, welcome, 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 welcome to everybody. If you are new to the social media scene, hey, uh, if you come every week, what's up? Thank you, thank you. I appreciate you. If you are watching the replay, I definitely appreciate you too. Thank you everybody for coming through to the social media scene. So, uh, for those of you that are like, who are you lady and why are you on my screen? My name is (laughs) Alice Fuller. I am principal consultant at Sheer Social. Now you're wondering, what is that? Okay, well, that is my social media marketing training and consulting business and I also do more training and consulting than I do social media management, but I do a little bit of that too. Don't, don't worry. I do some of that too. And this right here, this right here, this is the social media scene. This is where week to week, I give you the highlights of what's going on in the world of social media. Now I can't tell you every blessed thing. It's too much sometimes, but what I aim to do is narrow it down and how most of us use social media for business and a little bit of fun too. And when I can, I add a little entertainment flavor, a little television, a little film, that kind of thing. Cause in a minute people, it's just going to be media. Have you noticed there's a convergence happening in a minute. It's just all going to be media. So that's what this is. And today though, I've got a great guest and I'm going to, now I apologize. This is lazy producing. <laughs> But today I have a special guest and I want Jennifer Navarrete to introduce herself. So Jennifer, tell, tell people about yourself. Well, so first of all, super excited to be here. Um, we've got to share the story about how we met at some point during our, our time together. But um, I am a media mixologist for my company, Brewing Media. And what does media mixologist mean? It means that, as Alice said, it used to be called old media and new media. And now I think it's just media. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times when you're working with entrepreneurs, with business, with nonprofits, you've got to figure out what is it that they need? What mix of things do they need? So I kind of like the idea of being a mixologist to find the right formula just for them. Oh, a mixologist, a media mixologist. I'm I'm sure you've coined that already. You should. (laughs) So if you have not, now would be the time. (laughs) So, so that's Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer, for coming on the show. Now, for those of you that are interested in Facebook, what Facebook has going on with writers, if you are Mm -hmm. a blogger, If you're a journalist, I've got some news for you. 
today we definitely got to talk about this new subscription model and we're also going to talk about for small business owners if you are a small business owner facebook is doing a virtual festival that's going to help you or en enlighten you quite possibly to how to use the platform better so i'll definitely share that with you too and what else today we're also going to talk about instagram this was buzzing a little bit this week, but not, not, it wasn't the big buzz. I, I expected it, but I did expect it to, you know, start some conversations around why the CEO of Instagram is saying, you know what? We are, we are not a photo sharing app <laughs> that should have been like anymore, but Hey, but I'll tell you more about that in a minute and how that's going to impact how you're going to use the platform because it definitely will impact how you use the platform also today got to talk about this, this great article i found on um where did i find that article i forgot where i, where I found it it is on the verge the verge.com it was a great interview with the uh ceo of patreon jack i think his last name is conti c-o-n-t-e Mr. Jack, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, I do apologize. I've never heard it pronounced, but I think it is Conti. If it's not, it's C-O-N-T-E. So it's Cont or either Conti. All right. So at the end of the day, what's most important is what he has to say about monetization and this new creator economy that's being built. And I want to really talk about today is the future of that creator economy. And what he has to say about, you know what, as creators, are you really safe? Are your relationships with your audiences really safe on social media platforms? And I'll tell you more about that. So hopefully that'll incentivize you to stay to the end of the show. Okay, so <laughs> that's the breakdown for this here episode, okay? So I want Jennifer now to give us a little bit more information about what she does and as a mixologist and uh, about her particular businesses and service. Go ahead, knock it out. Fantastic. Well, so I got involved in podcasting in 2005. When I first heard about it, I was like, what is this thing? And then I realized that I could record something, put it up on the web, and no one could stop me. And I was like, sign me up. Let's do this thing. And I've been in love with podcasting ever since. Now that evolved into doing, um, you know, groups and doing events and speaking at conferences and, you know, all that kind of that whole thing. So that mm -hmm. thing in 2005 that was kind of like, I'm interested and curious about this thing has become what I do for a living and is this career path and is something that I have enjoyed watching come up into what is now mainstream business. Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, how long you been in the game? That's what I call it now, the game. The game, the actual working game, probably since, I guess I would say in 2010 Ooh, was really- around the same time. Right. So in 2005, I started podcasting, started groups, started doing events in 2007. But by 2010, it was enough of a thing that more people knew about it. Because back in 2005, if you talked about podcasting, blogging and vlogging, people looked at you like you were speaking Klingon. Um, you were speaking a foreign language. But by 2010, the rest of the world was catching up. And so that really became that transition point from hobby and interest to business. Yes, yes. So now you know who she is, and I'll, I'll give you an opportunity uh, when we get uh, more in-depth in the show to tell people where to find you. But for those of you that are social media savvy, it ain't that hard. Now, for those of you that are not, <laughs> Google is your free. Okay, but don't do that now. Don't do that now. Wait, because we got some great conversations to have today. So first, I got to get, you know what? We don't start a production until we market, right? Uh, we got to get my marker and we say in, in um as we say it in the television world we're going to mark where we start so i need my clapboard where's my clapboard Do i have my clapboard today here she is or here it is <laughs> there you go Bam! so let's get started with the first story of the day today we're definitely going to talk about let's get started with uh, this facebook thing because this facebook thing is going to impact a lot of you who are seeking monetization for those of you that are seeking monetization on your platforms you want to monetize your content pay attention because a lot is going to pop off in the next couple of months probably in the next couple of years okay so 
Facebook has announced, hey, we want to monetize the content of writers. If you're a journalist, if you're a blogger, this is your time to shine, quite possibly. <laughs> a new bulletin, it's called Bulletin, okay? A platform for independent writers. Now, for those of you that are already in this space, I know you're thinking, doesn't it sound like Substack? Yeah, <laughs> it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. So, uh, Jennifer, when you start thinking about bulletin platform for independent writers, where do you see Facebook going with this? Well, what I see is everyone in the industry in general, not just Facebook, trying to grab every single opportunity for content creators not to leave their platform. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even on Twitter, they've got, they bought that newsletter service review, right? Yeah. And that's because they want you to stay in one place, you know, yeah. and everyone is trying to do all the things. They're seeing, well, so-and-so is successful at this. So let's add that to our portfolio of features that we have so that our audience has no excuse to go oh. anywhere else. Oh, sorry, hit the wrong button. <laughs> yeah. And so I feel like everyone is trying to be and do all the things and the Instagram announcement that you mentioned earlier in reference to we're not a photo sharing app, which is mm -hmm. like, a, a what, what? You're, you're not <laughs> um, just shows just how much everyone's trying to grab onto the latest shiny and whatever other platform is getting attention. Um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, everyone is just trying to go, oh, we can do that too. Oh, we can do that too in order to keep everybody captive. So it makes sense that Facebook would say, you know, writers are going elsewhere to really, you know, create original content mm -hmm. that is long form. And we want to have that here because then you have, you have no reason to go anywhere else and they can keep you there so that of course they can advertise to you, which their Pretty business much. they're gonna do that people it is all gay it is well you know what that sounds so negative let me roll <laughs> that back okay let me not call it gay let me say strategy okay it's strategy now in this particular instance when we start talking about writers independent writers for those of you that are journalists for those of you that are bloggers you know, we spend so much time talking about video creators, but at the end of the day, this is a space too that is beginning to blow up. So Facebook, as you know, is not about to let any trend get beyond it. Mm -hmm. not, one, not one little bit. No. So this new bulletin, as they're calling it, well, I mean, they could have come up with something sexier than that, in my opinion, but whatever, they didn't ask me. So this new bulletin will basically be integrated into some of the Facebook tools, but you'll also get an opportunity to get off the platform. So if indeed you're looking for ways to monetize your content as well as generate a following. Also, we also know that is generate an audience. Yeah, you could do that. But here's the thing too. Here's the part that always irks me about when some of these tools become available and I understand why they do it. But right now, if you are uh, not one of the selected writers, mm. all you can do is wait for this to become available. And there is no definitive date. Not nowhere in any of my research did I could I tell you, hey, this is going to be available to everybody in August or September. But here's what I think. And Jennifer, you you let me know if you, if you think the same. Mm -hmm. Every time you know we we see the the news come out about a new something like this that that's monetization. Give it, I'd say, three weeks to a you know to maybe two months, not even two months. I say this will be available to more people. Mm -hmm. Why? Because Facebook is eager to start that monetization model. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Jennifer? Yay or nay? You uh, think? I, I completely agree. I think the challenge though, for those of us who are content creators, starting to add in the monetization into things like Twitter. Twitter now has tip jar, right? They're yeah. gonna have ticketed spaces. They're slowly rolling that out. And then they're eventually gonna have um, super followers. But yet people, the audiences on Twitter are accustomed to getting the content free. They've gotten it since Twitter started from the get-go. So uh, shifting that mindset for audiences and platforms that already have a 
you know, that's kind of ingrained where if you think about Patreon, Patreon has always been built as a way to monetize. And so mm -hmm. in the mindset of people, if I'm going to go support somebody on Patreon, I know that I'm doing that because I'm going to get extra stuff, but it's a pay for play kind of model. And Facebook is bringing this in as well. Clubhouse has it. You know, everyone's having this monetization aspect of what they're doing, but will the audiences convert? And I'm more interested in seeing how we as content creators kind of bring our audience along to provide the value so that we can convert and we can have the opportunity to generate income from the content that we create. Yeah. And based on my research, this is going to be useful to podcasters too, because once again, Facebook isn't going to leave anybody out. <laughs> <laughs> so according to my research, Bulletin seeks to get podcasters to join the platform. Uh, it will include tools that will allow a distribution of podcasts. Cool. And even if your podcast is hosted somewhere else, and you also have some additional uh, audio features, because in case you didn't know, uh, was it two weeks ago when Facebook began to integrate the podcast right into the feed where you mm -hmm. didn't have to leave the mm -hmm. feed to listen to a podcast episode? I think that was two weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, it was. It, yeah. it was a couple of weeks back, but it's not rolled out to everyone. Again, you talked about this right now. It's a select few. They're making all these big announcements of all these awesome features, all of the mm -hmm. platforms, but then they're rolling it out like it feels like molasses on a on a winter's day that slow um, to to those of us so that we can muck around and play with it. And I can't I'm really waiting to dive into it to see really what it is, because back in a few months back, the head of uh, Facebook apps was on Clubhouse being interviewed and she talked about Facebook. Facebook creating a having an audio portfolio. So not mm -hmm. just one thing, but multiple things that they were going to offer because she said they were going to make audio a first class citizen in Facebook. So that piqued my attention because if Facebook is going to make something a first class citizen, then in initially you get to kind of ride that wave where they really want you to use it. So they're going to boost your content without you having to pay to boost, at least until it becomes more well known and more used. And then of course it's pay to play again, yeah. but I'm interested to see how this rolls out. But again, I don't have access to it yet. Okay. Well, let's watch the little Facebook bulletin promo video over here on the, uh, about that facebook.com. So that's basically, uh, where Facebook puts a lot of its announcements in case y'all want to check this out for yourselves. So let's see if I got this set up correctly today. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Let's see. Facebook. Oh, here we go. Facebook Bulletin brings you closer. Closer to unique voices. Follow the creators you care about and support their efforts. Closer to fresh perspectives. With a wide range of content from niche to noteworthy. Closer to your people. Connect with communities who share your interests and passions. And closer to your latest fascinations, new infatuations, and wild obsessions you didn't know existed. Get closer to what moves you, together with Facebook Bulletin. Okay, that didn't tell us much. <laughs> no, no, it's, just, it's literally like a splash page that just went across. Yeah, so at the end of the day, it really didn't tell us. I hate when they do that. It's just like you could have given us a little bit, a little meat, a little mm -hmm. bit of meat in that Facebook. I mean, come on. It's not like you don't have video producers. Uh, but at any rate, I know you're thinking, well, monetization, there's got to be some caveat. Mm, well, at this point, Facebook says, hey, you know what? It's all you, boo, as we would say. It's all you. <laughs> if indeed you want to monetize, we have no problem with that. And as, as of right there, right now, now I say right now, there's no big split because usually there's always that, well, we'll take 30%, we'll take 40% and we'll give y'all whatever. No, right now, if you are one of these selected individuals for the platform, then you should be fine. So they're basically all they're really doing is giving you an opportunity to test it, see how it works out. And if this thing works out the way they think it is, then probably down the line, they'll, there's going to be a split. I can't, I can't foresee them not adding some sort of monetary split, but there's some perks to that too, because right now, because there isn't, uh, there aren't ads all around it and things of that nature, you will have the opportunity to kind of brand it as your own. 
So you can add your, your, your colors, you can add, you know, whatever kind of graphics it'll, it, it, it will kind of look like a WordPressy, you know, a little mm. websitey, uh, for, I'm making that word. So, uh, it's not even funny, <laughs> 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 but let me, okay. So here's what it will look like on a phone. Okay. So as you see it here, uh, I don't, how do you pronounce it? XO, XO Dory. How do you, I, I don't know. So you see, here's a twice weekly newsletter and about food and things of that nature and a recipe for double lemon loaf cake. That's why I, that's, that's what I get at Starbucks usually, but okay. Um, and then you see here, she's got niblets. Oh, that's a cute name. Niblets. You hit, you see where the subscribe button is right up top. Okay. And then you see here, there's two things I want you to notice people. Now notice right at the top, now this is a web browser for your phone. Even though it's going to be integrated into some elements of Facebook's, you know, infrastructure, you can integrate some of this with uh, the audio room so you can have some conversations around your, your content things. But notice this says Dorian Greenspan dot bulletin dot com. It does not say Facebook dot com. So, but we know who owns it, but at the end of the day, once again, this means there's a separate space I hear mm -hmm. in the world for bulletin separate from Facebook, even though we know Facebook owns it where you can create and monetize this content. So I think that's kind of interesting too, that Facebook would create a separate space, uh, for this type of written content that mm -hmm. they own. Maybe. I don't know why that usually it's always something, something facebook.com, but at the end of the day, uh, WordPress, I don't think you have anything to, to worry about. <laughs> I don't No, WordPress is my go-to. Yeah. I don't think any other, uh, bl I don't even think medium now medium or Substack. They may be looking at this like, wait a minute, player. Hold up. See, now we got to figure out, we got to up our game. But I think too, medium and Substack are a little farther ahead in the game that as long as they keep doing what they've been doing and keep creators happy, as you were saying before, making sure that the creators are, are satisfied with, with the monetization and the money split and they've got the tools mm -hmm. they want relationship still intact. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the Facebook news. As far as this new bulletin, uh, subscription, service oh and then the other thing too who will own this content got to keep that in mind facebook says it's yours we're not trying to take ownership of it okay but my my question still is how are you using my content facebook mm -hmm. now you ownership have, yeah if if you're not on if you're saying right out the gate hey content creators who are using this, this new bulletin tool, we are not here to take ownership of your content. Okay. That's, that's well and wonderful. So, but what are you here to do? Cause I know you're not doing this just for my benefit. <laughs> you're not mm. Jennifer. What do you, do you see it? What do you think is the, could be the underlying reason outside of Facebook just wants to take it, take advantage of this trend. If they're not getting the ownership of it, what's the benefit for Facebook? They're going to keep you in the ecosystem and you got to know there's going to be an ad rollout at some point. I mean, they're really just trying to keep themselves at the forefront. What's happening is they're seeing their lead as the largest social network um, slipping away because people are leaving in droves mm -hmm. and going other places. Yep. And so they're like, we've got to do all those things to bring people back in and to be fresh and new again. They've got to innovate or die. And that's what they're doing is that they're innovating and innovating slash copying um, in order to bring everything back in. But so is everybody else. They're not original in this thing they're they're modeling what they see successful and they're bringing it in-house to keep people there and and i have to say if we compare that to twitter you know twitter adding spaces to model clubhouse um certainly has has made it twitter more interesting and more dynamic and more engaging for me yeah. as a longtime user so it does work it's not like it doesn't work but at some point it feels a little bit much when everyone is trying to be all the things all the time to everyone mm-hmm and that's kind of like the first lesson they tell you in marketing. You can't be everything for everybody. 
Okay. Right. Figure out who you're trying to reach. Do what you can do to reach them, add value, but you're not here to reach every body. Yeah. Which, which kind of leads me to think somebody is going to fall off. One of these is eventually going to say that we tried it. It didn't work. Let's go back to what we know works. Mm -hmm. but well, I'd like, I, I venture to say that when uh, the head of Instagram said, we're not a photo sharing app. I, I'd like to see where that quote winds up a year, two, three, four, five years from now in relation to that, because that is such a bold statement. Yeah. Well, well, we'll talk about that in just a second. So while we're still in the Facebook house of things, uh, the good ideas festival, a good ideas festival. Okay. So if you're a small business owner and you're just looking, I know a lot of small business owners right now, they get frustrated or you are frustrated with the various things that are popping with Facebook. You always have to be abreast of what's going on with Facebook. There's something new. You got a new fan page design. Now uh, you no longer have insights on fan pages. Now you have to go into the business manager to get your, to get your insights. There's now there's a new focus with groups. There's always, there's always like every couple of weeks, there's a new feature with groups. There's always something you got to keep on top of with Facebook. So Facebook is like, you know what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to provide a new virtual experience, a seven week virtual experience called the Facebook good ideas festival. Okay. That sounds real. I mean, I, I like that. That sounds very, you know, very up, uh, good name for that. But, uh, what you'll get is some of the stuff, technically people that you've always been getting, that's been accessible to you, you know, through, um, through Facebook's program that gives you the, like the little tutorials on how to use various things. This is kind of like bringing all of that into one space. So you don't have to keep going from place to place. So you'll get free training and advice on how to use the platform. Okay. Nothing new there. Uh, but then there are some series or some, sh well, basically they're shows boost my business, which will be a video series hosted by uh, designer tan tan France. I'm not, I I've never watched the show. So, <laughs> um, uh, I'm, I'm also reading that this festival will be hosted by a uh, Zoe Saldana. If you know who that actress is from, um, from the Marvel movies, um, she was blue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're talking about, uh, the, um, oh shoot. The something <laughs> yeah. galaxy. Yeah. The galaxy. Yeah. But no, no, uh, that's one movie. She was green in that one. I think in oh. the, the other movie, she was blue. The the one, uh, the, the one regular. Avatar? Avatar? Yeah, I think it was Avatar. Anyway, y'all know who, y'all, basically, you know who she is. Okay. Yeah, and we're it, we're not doing the, the movie uh, trivia at all, no, you and I. No, but y'all no. know, y'all know who Zoe Saldana is. If not, Google is your friend. So they've got a little bit of celebrity presence, but at the end of the day, they're going to incorporate along with these trainings, some series like the Boost My Business, and you'll also get some free digital skills training, interactive workshops, and basically to help you, they say, learn some creative ways to grow your networks, sell goods online and more. Now, I'm seeing this as just an addition to what Facebook is already doing because Facebook has now began to really delve into e-commerce. So when mm. Facebook is not, now that Facebook is really into you know what? Yes, we're trying to monetize content for creators, but we're also trying to provide a platform for small businesses, especially if you if you're an e-commerce business and you've got product. If you got physical product. Now, if you're a service business, there may be a way to leverage this too, but the you know, the first thing that comes to mind is products. So yeah. for those of you that have those types of products, this might be a good time to really delve into how Facebook shops, Facebook live shopping, because I'm big on live streaming and some of these other things that Facebook has put in place for small businesses. The main week of the festival is July 12th through the 16th. And you will find it on Facebook's business of Facebook for business page 
and their Instagram page. Okay. So you know, like you got to go far. It's basically right under your nose. And there's going to be a focus too for the hospitality industry that, have, you know, basically everybody knows the hospitality industry was hit really, really hard by COVID. And because of that, they're going to do a couple of series with that. One series is going to be called Found on Facebook, and they're going to interview people who are restaurant owners. Okay, that might be nice, but I, but that's kind of interesting to me too, because I think as we are right here in the middle, I don't think we're so far out of COVID yet. Hmm. And, you know, there's all this controversy around whether employees want to come back and things of that nature. So it'll be interesting to see if Facebook even addresses those things that are impacting uh, restaurant owners but at the end of the day you've got found on facebook and you've got another uh, training session called getting back to business in those regions of the country where businesses are reopening hmm. Would you, you know you met, well you know you mentioned that uh this is stuff that facebook and instagram they already have these available however they're not easy to find because as you mentioned you have to go from here to here to here to here yep. to try and find those things i like that they're putting something together in a single cohesive kind of like let me hold your hand and let me walk you through all of this amazing training we have and they're shining a special spotlight on it because they are not easy to navigate you talked about the business manager mm -hmm. it's kind of wonky because sometimes i'll click on a business page and it goes straight to business manager and other times it goes to the normal thing and there's not like a consistent thing as they're rolling this out i know eventually it will be just business manager mm -hmm. but it's confusing because um i'm in this space and i realize i can see the wonkiness but for the average business owner who has a page and they get different experiences every single time i can tell you that they think they are doing something wrong yep. <laughs> and the reality is that this rollout is just a little bumpy like any other rollout it's a little bumpy and it will you know depending on on the time that you go it may be business manager that you go to it may be your regular traditional page that you're accustomed to but i like that they're doing this hand holding and really putting all of the great resources that they have in existence mm -hmm. putting them together adding the star power not a bad touch. I always think that that does draw some of the looky, some of the folks that may not have done it, but because there's a star involved, they're willing to kind of go and take a look at it and they'll learn. Yeah. So let's go over here to the official website for the Good Ideas Festival. So here, it says here, at the heart of every small business is a good idea and we believe they deserve to be found. Well, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. So we're over here on Facebook for business and you've got, you know, various things that you can check out over here. Uh, you got platforms and products. Cause I think some of you don't even know this, this page or this section of Facebook even exists. So you've got other elements here, video, educational resources. Okay. You got the webinar certification programs, courses. Okay, cool. Now, as you see here, it says the main festival starts July 12th. Uh, through the, uh, uh, let's see, July 12th through the 16th, Facebook for Business, okay, and the Instagram page. Uh, they'll be on demand for one month starting on July 16th, as you see there. That's pretty good, okay. Uh, let's see, there's, here's some festival highlights here you can look at. I just told you about the Found on Facebook series. There'll be a, a live product Q&A cool you know lots of different things here to to really take advantage of if you're a small business uh live product how to reach new customers with instagram shopping it's funny uh because we're going to talk about instagram next but what i find interesting about this is we we spent the last couple of years telling everybody about being creative creating all this content for these platforms but as you see here at the end of the day it's about business it's about making money it's about which is not a, i'm not saying that as a negative at all but i think at this point it's time to kind of change the focus if you're a creator and even if you're a small business and you know as, as consultants as trainers and things of that nature we we've, we've really kind of pushed being creative but now is the time to really get strategic if if not now then there's no point <laughs> i hate to say it you really now need to get strategic 
in how you use, that's my clapboard, yep. You need to get strategic in how you use these platforms because right now, if you're not being strategic in how you use them, you'll just continue to create content upon content upon content and you really won't, you really won't get where you want to go. So uh, Jennifer, when we start thinking about changing the shift of thinking around using Facebook for business, would you say when it comes down to this festival and why is Facebook so focused on small businesses? Because notice we haven't heard Facebook really talking about major, major corporations in a while because I think a lot of them are still salty with Facebook <laughs> for various reasons. But over the last, I'd say two, three years, there's been a real push in the small business arena with Facebook. Any insight into why? Well, if you think about it, the small business is the backbone of America. I mean, yeah. you look at the data and the stats that supports that. So the fact that Facebook is now on board, I think is fabulous. I think it's great. Like anything else, when you're creating content, original content, mm -hmm. be mindful of the fact that it is on Facebook and you don't own it and they can shut you down at any time. And so obviously you want to be mindful of that. And we'll talk a little bit about that, at, I know, in a little bit. But I, I think it's great that they're finally paying attention because I know for a long time, the big complaint that you hear from individuals who are in business, like entrepreneurs or consultants and small business, that Facebook doesn't care about them because they're so busy courting these large um, companies. And now that they are going to be paying attention to the smaller businesses. I think that's a good thing because you'll really be able to get more attention and really get more reach. Now, granted, it's a good idea for them to pay attention to small business because small business has dollars to spend just as much, maybe not as much as big business, but locally we have dollars to spend. And so it looks to me like they're going more hyper local or more local. Mm -hmm. And in that way, they're hoping to gain more advertising dollars by um, showing small business. This is how you can use all the cool stuff that we have. And oh, by the way, would you like to buy an ad for that? <laughs> that part <laughs> it all it always comes back to that <laughs> always come back to the coin hey tachi i see you how you doing happy friday so it always comes back I, people i'm not trying to be negative now let's let's be clear but i just want you to understand that this social media game has has people hate the word pivot because we've been using it so much over the over over uh, you know, the last year, but if you have not noticed things have changed and now is the time to really get strategic in how you use social media. The days of playing in the sandbox as a business are over. It's n yes, there's a lot of pay to play and you just have to get into the mindset that reach is down by, was it two, 2%, 5% last time I checked organic reach. So if yeah, it's almost non-existent. <laughs> pretty much. I was trying to be nice about it, but <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to be real. <laughs> I'm, yeah, but you know, sometimes that too real. Some people don't like too real because then you be she's so negative. But anyway, <laughs> but if you are using social media marketing, you are a small business. Then you have to really, really be strategic because a lot of my clients they get frustrated with Facebook because one, like I said before, trying to keep abreast of all the changes, but then two, trying to create the ads and things of that nature. And when you go into your ad manager, it's like a whole new world sometimes for somebody who, who's never been in that space before and you get frustrated, you do an ad, it doesn't work. So I think too, some of that is getting back to Facebook. I would be willing to bet. And like you said, because they're seeing more and more small businesses who are operated by regular people and even some celebrities too, they can have a small business. They're beginning to navigate to other platforms. Hmm. So Facebook is like, you know what? Don't leave, please. Don't <laughs> leave. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We'll teach you. We'll teach you. We'll give you everything you need to use this platform. Hold on, hold tight. We'll give you everything you need kind of, kind of approach. All right. So that said, let's move on to the gram. Oh, the gram, the gram, the gram, the gram. I have a, uh, it's not a love hate relationship with Instagram. 
Uh, it's kind of like I tolerate. <laughs> it's a, it's a necessary evil. Sometimes it feels like it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now here's the thing too, because as a social media marketer, as a professional in this, in this, in this game, people have expectations. You're supposed to be, you're supposed to have a bazillion followers on all the platforms. You're supposed to have, look here, uh, individual. <laughs> the days that we, we really pushed being everywhere over, over, dead, done, let it go. Let go, let God, let it go, it's done. We're now getting into the conversations about stop spreading yourself too thin. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to be everywhere for everybody and just focus on one. If that is going to be Instagram for you, understand just like any other social media platform, Instagram is going through some phases right now too, where it is beginning to change its focus. Instagram CEO. How do you say his last name? Mazzari? You know, I, yeah, I, I have never, I think, I don't even know if I've heard him say it. Did he say it in the, in, in the video? I feel, I feel so bad because I've never heard the man say, say the name and I'm thinking it's Mazari. I think if not, uh, Mr. Adam, I apologize. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we start thinking about Instagram, I would dare say this announcement that he's made a proclamation, so to speak is a little, uh, you, you a little late, Adam. Uh, we figured out, <laughs> we figured out. The it, horse has left the barn. <laughs> long ago. Yeah. So long ago. It's not even funny. <laughs> <laughs> so for him now to say, Hey, we're not a photo sharing app. Duh. <laughs> I think, I think as users, we knew that, but for some of you who are not in this space, you hire us to be in this space. Once again, you have to be aware of when a platform changes its focus. So he says, Hey, we're no longer a photo sharing app. What we're going to delve into or lean more into is, is being a destination for entertainment and video. And he's saying that based on the success he's seeing over there with TikTok and YouTube. Mm -hmm. Once again, going back to what you said, Jennifer, please don't leave. We can do that too. We can do what TikTok does. That's mm -hmm. why we have reels. Yeah. We can do what YouTube does. That's why we have IGTV. Mm -hmm. You don't have to leave. You can stay right here, right, right here, right. You don't, why you, why you leave? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I have, I, I still like Instagram as a photo sharing app, even though he made this line in the sand, planted a flag and said, we're not this anymore. I, I mean, I think they, here's the way I look at it. You remember MTV? Of course. The M and the M stood for music back yep. in the day. Yep. And they played music videos, right? Yep. And they interviewed musicians. Uh -huh. uh, and then all of a sudden they got into reality TV and they're not the music. The MTV doesn't really stand for music anymore because they followed this new trend that they helped develop this reality TV. Mm -hmm. I miss music television. They lost me as a consumer. I'm not their demographic anymore because I've aged out. Mm -hmm. But I grew up. I grew up with MTV. You know what I mean? I remember the original VJs and then the second ones who came in. I was a big MTV fan and I bought a lot of music and a lot of, you know, stuff based on the music that they were servicing. Then they changed to reality TV and now I'm not interested. Granted, they have a whole new market. And so it could be that Instagram's like, those of you that helped us get here to the dance, we're not interested in you anymore. We want to dance with these other people. And, you know, it happens. I wish it didn't have to happen so like line in the sand. Why can't we all just be together? I don't know. That's just me, old school gal. Okay, well, let's hear it straight from Mr. Uh, well, let me just, Adam, that's the part I know I can say correct. <laughs> let's hear it straight <laughs> yeah. from, from Adam's mouth. Okay, so here you go. Hey everyone. I thought it would be good to start sharing more about what we're currently working on internally at Instagram, just to give you a sense of what's coming before it comes. 
Right now, we are trying to build new experiences primarily in four areas. The first is creators. And I've talked a lot about creators and trying to help them make a living. And this has to do with the shift in power from institutions to individuals across industries. The second is video. Video is driving an immense amount of growth online for all the major platforms right now. And it's one that I think we need to lean into more. And I'm gonna actually talk about that more in a minute. The third is shopping. Now the pandemic shifted or accelerated the shift of commerce from offline to online by a number of years and we're trying to lean into that trend. And the fourth is messaging. How people connect with their close friends has changed a lot over the last five years or so. And has moved primarily to messaging away from feed and stories products. But today I actually wanna talk a bit more about video. And I wanna start by saying, we're no longer a photo sharing app or a square photo sharing app. The number one reason people say that they use Instagram in research is to be entertained. So people are looking to us for that. So actually this past week in our internal all hands, we shared or I shared a lot about what we're trying to do to lean into that trend, into entertainment and into video. Because let's be honest, there's some really serious competition right now. TikTok is huge, YouTube is even bigger, and there's lots of other upstarts as well. And so if people are looking to Instagram to be entertained, there's stiff competition and there's more to do, then we have to embrace that. And that means change. So what you're gonna see over the next couple months really is us start to experiment more in the space of what we call recommendations. So showing you things in feed that you may not be following yet. We just started testing an early version of this last week. This week there's a new version that's coming out with topics where you can say which topics you wanna to see more of or less of. But we're also gonna be experimenting with how do we embrace video more broadly. Full screen, immersive, entertaining, mobile first video. And so you'll see us do a number of things or experiment with a number of things in this space over the coming months. Now, we have an idea of where we're gonna end up in a half a year or a year's time, but I'm sure things are gonna change many times between now and then. This isn't something that we can just do overnight. So you'll see us iterate and try and be very public about what we're doing and why with videos like this one. Anyway, hopefully you'll enjoy it. Peace. Mm-hmm. Peace to mm. you too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, I keep forgetting to, to get rid of that. Now, I like my clapboard, but at the end of the day, clapboard, uh, now this is, this is why I say I need a technical director. Okay, so at the end of the day, Y'all heard it for yourselves. This is the direction the app is going in. And on one end, here's the part that irks me to a degree. I've been saying for the last two years, Instagram wants you to be an entertainer. Now I've worked in television and entertainment most of my career. Howsoever, I do not see myself as an entertainer. Don't let this live stream fool you. <laughs> I am, <laughs> I am not here to entertain. The entertainment piece for me is so bottom. The, the inform, enlighten, mm -hmm. and get you to the next step so that you can use these platforms and leverage them is where I am. For those of you who are willing to get into this mindset, because now you got to be in a, in a headspace. Mm -hmm. I got to be entertaining. Uh, how do how do I how do I as a business be entertaining? So uh, Jennifer, what's 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 your insight on, on that? I think TikTok seeded this in such a big way. You know, TikTok really took off during pandemic because we were all stuck at home and we were all challenged and wanted to be entertained and quick, you know, quick, 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 quick without investing a lot of time and our attention span was uh, frazzled. And so I think TikTok just had the perfect storm of being something that really gained mass attention during pandemic and has maintained it because you can look at Clubhouse and Clubhouse had attention like, you know, for a few months mm -hmm. and now it's starting to lose a lot of that traction. TikTok is only growing bigger and bigger. And so obviously Instagram is going, uh, we need a piece of that pie because we're losing that, which as you mentioned, that's why they came up with reels mm -hmm. was for that purpose. And it's successful. You know, people who are creating reels, some of the Instagram pros that I know that are really, you know, buying into reels that are like, yeah, this is it. They're seeing big success, but that goes with the fact that Instagram, it wants it to be a success. So if you create a reel, they're going to serve it up to more people so that way it can gain traction so that you do create more, so that you can be more entertaining. So you're right. It is a totally different headspace to be an entertainer than it is to be someone who gives information and is factual. You can do both, but 
someone who's an entertainer, I feel has to create more content more often. That's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. True, true, true. So again, just be willing if you are to shift focus, even as a business, because now Instagram wants you to be what we call in television, the talent, mm. the talent. I hate to say it, but that's basically at the end of the day, which is a great segue into this great article I saw on The Verge this week. Let me let me show y'all this because I, if, for those of you that are that still like to read, <laughs> <laughs> this article here is called uh, "Patreon CEO Jack Conti on uh, Why Creators Can't Depend on Platforms." He's a cutie pie. Look at you. Okay, so Alice, don't get distracted. Okay, so when you think about where we are going in this space of social media. When we start thinking about monetization, now we just heard Adam talk about the new focus. There's also going to be monetization underneath all of that. But here's the question. Are you just gaining followers or are you gaining an audience that you can own? Are you gaining a follower, a following that you can own? He had a great comment. Let me see if I can cue this up. It's going to be a little messy, but based on what you've seen already, <laughs> you, should, you, should be, you should be fine. <laughs> so let me see if I can cue, cue it up because I want you to hear it directly from, from him. So this is, let me see, 32, we go, here we, here we go. That's all. Make more money by sending those users elsewhere. They will. But I don't own that audience. They're, it's not, they're not really my fans. On those mass media companies, on those sites that are destinations, those are not solid platforms on which I can build a business as a creator. With one change, th they can cut my traffic in half and, and do. I mean, often cut my traffic in half and I'm left as a creator with suddenly half the views, half the ad revenue and none of the control. And now I've actually lost touch with half of my audience. You know, Pop Loose has been on the Internet since 2008, putting out videos. Now, when we make a post on Facebook, we get a little pop up that says, uh, congratulations, you've reached 1.3 percent of your audience. Would you <laughs> like to reach 1.8 percent of your audience? Pay two hundred dollars. I have not been building a fan base on Facebook. I've been building Facebook's user base and I didn't know it. <laughs> anyway, creators will need, and it's not just creators, it's individuals on the web. I think Shopify is thinking about this in the same way. People need a place where they can own their customer relationships, where there's not a mitigator between the consumer and the author and the creator and the merchant or whoever it is. So yes, those companies are, of course, getting into payments as they should. I'm actually very excited about that world because, again, I think it's net positive for creators. I think all that competition is going to mean that creators are about to make literally billions of dollars over the next decade. But I think along the way, creators are already starting, certainly media companies and creators are starting to realize, I'm not safe on these platforms. I don't own my customer base on these. Okay. Uh, your two cents on that, Jennifer. So I agree, but no, but no, why is the Patreon head of Patreon putting this out now? Well, when Apple came out with their, we're going to do subscriptions for podcasters. I was like my, I think one of the tweets I put out there is Patreon's like, uh oh, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody's coming after everybody else's market share. And I think that's why Patreon is saying, look, it's great that Facebook wants to do this. It's great that Twitter wants to do, you know, these things. It's great that all these other platforms are now diving into the, to supporting creator and having you know creator types of monetar monetization opportunities yep. but patreon is saying we've been doing that from the get-go and we also take less cut than the average right mm -hmm. i mean apple's going to take 30 percent and then you also have then your paypal fees or whatever fees that go along venmo fees whatever fees go along with it so if you look at patreon they're actually a better opportunity but again do you own those patreon they say you do but how many people got deplatformed on patreon 
just like they have on YouTube, just like they have on Facebook, just like they have anywhere else. We're renting that space. And if mm -hmm. we build our followers in that rented on that rented land and that rented land can be taken away at any time, it's a hard place to be when you put a lot of time and effort into creating that original content, giving of yourself and all to have the you know rug pulled out from under you. So ownership is so important. And it's a hard thing to kind of get your head around if you haven't considered it before. But consider ownership in all of the stuff that you do. Use the platforms. There's an audience there, but bring people back to your plot of land that you own. Mm -hmm. So basically, people don't put all your eggs in that one basket that you don't even own you don't yeah. own the basket and technically you may not even own the eggs <laughs> <laughs> so as 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 you're looking into the future of social media market this is what you really need to be aware of this creator economy as we're calling it now is mm -hmm. just going to build bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because lots of people now realize I can make money doing this. I can make a living doing this. Yes, but the money doesn't come overnight. Okay, let's be clear. I know you see these YouTubers and some of these other people's, you know, and all their great photos and the new car, the new house or whatever they may have, have, have purchased or invested in, whatever. At the end of the day, that did not happen overnight. Okay, I don't care what they tell you. <laughs> in the quotes and in the mm -hmm. headlines of, of the content it wasn't overnight. If you are building something, you want to make sure that you have access to that audience at all times. We've seen Facebook go down. We've seen Instagram go down. We've even seen Twitter go down. Cause usually everybody rushes to Twitter to see if Facebook and Instagram <laughs> are down. Any of these platforms could go down. And if that's the case, where is your monetization then? How are you going to reach that audience then? Uh, for those of you that, you know, have avoided having your own website because I could just pop something up for free on Facebook and social media and wherever else. Now is the time to, to, to start thinking about having your own. Yes, I know there's some millennial right now. Well, your, your website could be hacked. Yes, it could be. Nothing is perfect, youngin. But at the end of the day, at least there you have access to the monetization because the monetization really comes from the people. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily the platform is the channel, but the real money is in the people. If you don't have access to your people, you got access to what? Air and opportunity. Yeah, that's it. No, it's so true. I mean, it's so true. Get like, start thinking about ownership. And I'm not, you know, we talk about owning an audience. I mean, the audience is in control because they can shift where they want to consume content and shift whether they want to consume it from you or not, and whether they mm -hmm. want to fund you or not. But you have to be mindful of the fact that if you're again on rented land that you don't control, uh, it could be taken away tomorrow. And, and if you're not, you know, don't have at least, even if it's the tiniest little plot of land, but it's yours, you own, you've got the deed to it. That is better than being at the mercy of all these big giant tech companies. Yes, they're great channels. Yes, we all connect on there. Yes, use them for the connection and for the engagement and to build your audience, but don't depend on them to be, have your best interests at heart because they have their best interests at heart. Sometimes those interests align, which is great, but not all the time. Amen, amen, and amen. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So people, that's a wrap. It's official. It's official. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer, for coming on the show. This was fun because I get so tired of talking to myself and not that I'm not talking to y'all. So don't, don't get your feelings hurt. House and ever. Don't you like hearing somebody else's perspective sometimes just instead of mine? I know I do. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, so the way that I'll do real quick, I know we're getting ready to wrap, but real quick, we met through, through someone else on another, at another event. It was Madeline Sklar um, doing the Twitter smarter. And as she was the featured guest and as she was talking the whole time she was talking, I was shaking my head. I was nodding my head, nodding my head. And I felt like a human bobblehead because I, everything <laughs> she was saying, we were so aligned and I'm like, I got to know this woman. I need to get in her world. <laughs> Please. So I'm super honored and thrilled to be here with you on your show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So again, people, if you have any questions, 
concerned, well, not concerns, because I can't fix your life. But if you have something <laughs> about social media in reference to the show, if there is a question or if there's a topic that you would like covered on the show, please, please, please let me know in the comments. Also, I would dare say, share this stream with your friends and frenemies, especially those individuals who think they know every blessed thing about social media. <laughs> However, the proof is in the pudding, as my grandmother would say. Okay, so go ahead, share this stream. I totally appreciate you doing that. And I will see you next week. It is a holiday weekend, people. So for those of you that are going to uh, go out into the to the streets of wherever you may be, I have one request, and it's a selfish one: be safe. And I ask, and I say that, and I and I'm really pushing that. Why? Because I want you to come back next week. <clears throat> but <laughs> but I also do want you to be safe out here because there's a lot going on this weekend with the Fourth of July holiday. And there's a lot to go. There's a lot to go. There's a lot to get into. Just be safe. That's all I'm saying. So mm -hmm. have a good weekend, everybody. I will see you next week. Same time, same place, same profiles. And any last parting words, Jennifer, before I, before we fade to black here? Happy Independence Day, everyone. There you have it. There, there you go. There you go. So bye-bye, people. Mm -hmm.